Hey, what's up guys, it's Theo from Final Concepts and this is the review of the Samsung Galaxy A12. This phone costs 1000 Ghana CDs, so it is somewhere between the mid-range and the low budget phones. But is it in any way good? Well, let's find out. So, like I mentioned, this phone costs 999 Ghana CDs and like most phones in this price range, it has a plastic back and frame and so there's no wireless charging here. With a bigger battery, it has a fair weight of 205 grams. And for the design, we have a secondary microphone up top for stereo audio recording, the fingerprint scanner or power button and the volume rockets are on the right, the dual nano sim and SD card tray on the left. Then finally at the bottom is a 3.5mm headphone jack the main microphone, a USB Type-C charging port, and a single bottom firing speaker. We get a single LED flash and four rear cameras, which I'll talk about more later in this video. Now, I should mention that the feel on the back is also great with this texture. As you can see, there is no form of fingerprint on this. Samsung gladly provides a clear case for this, which comes in the box. Funny enough, the case itself is a huge fingerprint magnet, so if you're someone who is not fond of cases, I suggest you don't even take this out of the box. Up front is a 6.5 inches PLS IPS display running at a 720p resolution with an aspect ratio of 20 by 9. The phone is very responsive running Android 10 and Samsung One UI 2.0. And with a 12 nanometer Helio P35 chipset for MediaTek with these configurations. So we have a 32 gig storage, 3 gigs of RAM, 64 gig storage, 4 gigs of RAM, 128 gigs of storage, 4 gigs of RAM, or 128 gigs of storage with 6 gigs of RAM. That's the one I would want to go for. But the one I got my hand on was the 64 gigs of storage with 4 gigs of RAM. With a 5000 mAh battery, you're sure to get an entire day of usage. I charge this phone once a day and that is when I'm going to bed. And the next day I start with 100% and I have no battery issues. The main camera is a 48 megapixel with 26 mm wide view. Then we have a 5 megapixel ultra wide and a 2 megapixel f2.4 macro and depth sensors. For pictures, I was pleasantly satisfied with the photos I got with every shot. Taking pictures was snappy and I didn't notice any form of shadow lags. My complaints though, yes, I have a few, is the inconsistency in the colors between the main and the ultra wide cameras. For some reason, the colors on the ultra wide are more vivid and saturated, which I prefer, but the 5 megapixel is not good enough. But that's just 5 megapixel. It would be nice if I could get the same color consistency with the main 48 megapixel camera. Within the camera app for the rear cameras is the more options tab, where we get to shoot in pro mode. This allows you to control the white balance, the ISO and shutter speed, which helps turn photos like this to photos like this. Night shots aren't so great, so if you plan on taking this out for night photography, you will be disappointed. All right, and this is the video quality of the front facing camera at night. As you can see, it's pretty bad because of the poor lighting on the street. So yeah, if you are getting this for any form of street photography or video recorded, then this isn't the one for you. Also in the more options tab is the option to shoot in micro mode. This I didn't really think I'll be using as much as I enjoyed when I was testing out the camera. So at some point in time, I think I'll be switching to the macro very soon. <laughs> and this is how close I had to get to the subject to take this shot. And as you can see, they are quite usable if you want to have a little bit of fun. Colors and sharpness are not that off, so it's acceptable. And unlike the macro lens on the Techno Spark 5 Pro, I prefer using this one. If you're interested in that review, I'll have it linked up here or down in the description below. Also in the camera app is live focus mode, which blurs out the background of whatever photos you take. And just like the iPhone 10 and Google Pixel 4 XL from previous reviews, this doesn't also get the edge detection right. And if you take a closer look, you notice that this area here is more blurred out than here. But this is the best edge detection I've seen so far. With this photo I took with the main lens, I wanted to get everything in a single shot. The blues and highlights in the skies, the greens in the leaves, the shadows on the streets and blacks on the water tanks and car. And I felt with this you get a better perspective of how everything is going to look when you are in a situation like this. For videos it records 1080p at 30 frames per second like almost every phone I have reviewed so far and this is how it looks and sounds like. And this is the video quality of the rear facing camera, sorry it's a little bit windy today. So let me know if it looks any good. It's still recording at 30 frames 1080p. So I can see 
very nice colors from here just look at how beautiful the sky is looking with those blue colors now the 8 megapixel f 2.2 front facing camera is in this teardrop display and i must say it takes very promising selfies i'm not really a selfie person i like taking pictures with the rear camera rather than the one in front but i see myself using this one because the images i got so far are pretty good the front facing camera also records 1080p 30 frames per second and here's how it looks and sounds well the audio is the same <laughs> so this is the video quality of the front facing camera and tell me how it looks luckily for us we have two microphones so you can hear from the left or the right of your phone so if you are using stereo speakers or headsets let me know if you are able to detect any of these I mean features like HDR or high dynamic range on both the front and the back you can always count on getting brighter images even in the dark although it's not 100% it's still cool to have this feature for security besides the usual pattern pin and password unlock we get with all Android devices there is an inclusion of face and fingerprint unlock and just like the Samsung A02s more that appear or down in the description below the face unlock on this is something you can actually use. Now the reason for this is unlike other devices which allow my kid brother to unlock my device with his face, this one does not. The side mounted fingerprint scanner also works just fine. It took less than one minute to completely scan my finger. For speed, it is very responsive. Just pressing on the power button turns the device on, scans your finger and then unlocks it. All at an instance. The same idea and speed is just like the Samsung Galaxy S7 Edge with the fingerprint embedded in the home button. You just press the home button, unlocks your device right there and then. Now if you're wondering whether the S7 Edge is still worth it in 2021, check the video up here or down in the description below. Playing games with this came with no issues as we should expect with these specs. I thought with the MediaTek processor I'll be running into issues playing games but I didn't get any of that with this phone. And the taller and wider display also helps to see a lot of what's going on in the gaming environment. One inbuilt feature I found quite useful was the game booster options you get once you swipe up in a game. This gives you a fair idea of your battery life, your temperature and RAM usage. And with this feature you can also take screenshots and record gameplays neat so there are lots of things to like about this phone the 4g connectivity on both sim 1 and sim 2 is very high and when you are switching between them it's very snappy too we are also getting bluetooth version 5.0 and fast charging at 15 watts so with all that said will i recommend this phone well let me explain <laughs> if you're ready to sacrifice a thousand ghana cds for an all-round phone then this is the one to go for but if you have 500 ghana cd extra i recommend you get the samsung galaxy a50 also up here or down in the description below because it has better cameras and it has software updates from samsung like almost every time and unlike the samsung a50 although shots are not stabilized you don't get that intense color shift when shooting with the ultra wide camera and mind you this one also has a bigger battery and wider display so that is something to take note of but like i said if you have 500 cities extra then get the a50 anyway thank you guys for watching if you like this video please give it a thumbs up subscribe to this channel and other channels which i have them linked below and as always don't forget to share with your family and friends this is still for Concept. And I'll talk to you guys in the next one.